Hello everyone and welcome to another tutorial in the Go-To Shell series. In this series we'll discuss tips, tricks, and techniques for shell scripting in five minutes or fewer. Before we begin, first, due to its ubiquity and my experience with it, we're going to use Bash, specifically version 4 and higher. Secondly, I'm not perfect, so if you do spot any errors or mistakes on my part, let me know in the comments or by email and I'll try to get that corrected in the video. Welcome again everyone. Today's lesson is going to be on quote wars, uh, using single quotes versus double quotes when you're doing shell scripting. And uh, caveat here, we are using Bash, okay? Different shells are a little bit different. We'll try to cover some fundamentals and then one special little thing toward the end. It will help in this video if you understand what interpolation and expansion are. Uh, if you don't, you can go research it, but basically for our intents and purposes, interpolation and expansion are when you try to take a variable and actually put the contents of it into a string that you're trying to use. Uh, that's all you need to know about it for, for this particular lesson. So let's cut over here. All right, uh, just before we start the timer, you'll notice we have three files. One of them just is a random file. It has some text in it that we're going to use later. And then we have a couple of shell scripts that we're going to be jumping into and taking a look at. So let's get the timer started. I think that's it. Yeah, there we go. All right. So single quotes are by far the simplest to explain. Basically, they are string literals. And what that means is they literally contain character for character what it is you write into them. They don't care if you have dollar signs or any sort of back ticks or weird characters. None of that gets evaluated. It's literally a string, hence its name string literal. If you put variables into it, they won't expand. If you try to do subshells in it, they won't expand. If you put anything in it, they won't expand. We can open up this first example and see that we are trying to use the echo command to print out a variable. We set the variable to say hello there up above. We're trying to print it out. The single quote version won't do it. The double quoted version will do it. We can see that over here. So the single quoted didn't, double quoted did. Okay, that, that's pretty straightforward. But it goes beyond that as well. You have messages like this. This contains two dollars. This contains two dollars. You can see right here that we're going to have a problem because two is a valid character for a variable name. So Bash is going to try to find a variable named dollar sign two which for all you hardcore nerds is actually positional number two, but don't worry about that. The point is when we run this now, after we write it, it's gonna show up as nothing because there is no dollar sign two variable in our script. So we didn't get the message we expected simply because we used double quotes and some interpolation happened here, okay? You can escape this if you want. There is some escaping that works. You can put a backslash here, and that will tell the double quoted string to ignore the dollar sign and move on. So that kind of fixed our problem. Unfortunately, you can't do backslashes for things like a tab character. Let's say I wanted to put a tab here, or we'll make it a new line. Still doesn't work. So when Bash looks at strings, even when they're inside double quotes, it won't evaluate certain backslash characters. And all of this is documented in the man page for you to go look up. We mentioned last time about a program called cat, but if for those that don't know what it is, all cat does is spit out the contents of a file to your screen or to some output file descriptor you specify. In this case, we're just gonna try to spit out the contents of this file and have it collected inside this string. But since it's single quoted, it won't work. Down here where we've used double quotes, it will work. So this whole section here is called a subshell. You might learn about those later. And we're gonna to try to get the contents of this file put into this string. Let's write that out and run it. And you'll notice again with the single quotes, we got literally what we typed. Whereas down here, we actually got the contents of the file. We can see that by looking at our random file. See? So that's kind of the gist of single quotes versus double quotes. 
Um, in most of these videos, you guys know I do not go on giving tons of examples, explaining every weird little pigeonhole thing you could think of. Um, also, we are in Bash. Other shells can operate a little bit differently with strings, but what I've shown so far is pretty much universal. What I'm about to show is not so universal. I have a special script, and for those of you watching, this is going to be a little bit more advanced, okay? I've conveniently called it special. <clears throat> Excuse me. You'll remember from other lessons that if you want to get things like tab characters put into your strings, the echo command has the dash E switch. That's nice, I guess. We can go ahead and run that. And yeah, the first two examples, whether they're single quoted or double quoted, didn't matter. It still didn't work. It still put a literal backslash T. The third one gave us the actual tab character here because echo can do that for us. But there are cases where you might actually want the tab character itself in your variable. You'll notice here I'm about to create a variable and I want this backslash T to become a tab, an actual tab. But when I run this, it's just not. Bash has a solution for that so that you don't have to do a bunch of funky stuff with echo. If you have a single quoted string and you put a dollar sign in front of it, it will evaluate it and actually give you the tab character you're looking for. This is critical for certain things, like if you're using printf. Printf can do a new line or a tab character here, but it can't do it over here, or if it does, I don't know how. And we can demonstrate that by having our actual tab character in the variable and then a backslash t here. And yes, I know we're out of time, but I wanted to go ahead and get that in there for you. Um, to conclude this one, guys, I really recommend that if you want to understand the difference between single quotes and double quotes, go look up Bash's interpolation and expansion. Go read up on how it is Bash tries or any shell tries to expand variables or expand commands or expand braces. Because once you understand that, you'll realize that if it's bare, there are no quotes, it interpolates and expands like normal. If you use double quotes around something, it will try its hardest to interpolate and expand. And if you use single quotes, it will try its hardest to never interpolate anything. All right, guys, that is pretty much it. Thank you again for watching. If you enjoyed this, give me a thumbs up. Let's me know if this particular video was helpful or if maybe I need to redo it. Uh, Please leave comments. Uh, feel free to start questions in the comment section. Uh, I, I love to see it when people are helping each other out. Also, you can subscribe if you'd like, and as the videos get posted, uh, I don't really have a time frame for them, but as they get posted, you can help me spread this. Appreciate it, guys. Have a great day.